Thank you. I want to thank each of our witnesses for being here for your testimonies. Also want to thank Chairwoman Maloney for holding this hearing so that the American people can see the disturbing trend in this committee of going after both private citizens and the constitutional rights of American citizens. Uh, just the other day, this committee went after those in the energy sector and now going after firearm manufacturers all for political purposes. And just to go with uh, Chairwoman's uh, comments, I want to know when are you, Chairwoman Maloney, going to apologize to the American citizens for not dealing with the real issue and showing responsibility and accountability? When are we going to have hearings in this committee holding people responsible in cities, municipalities, states, and right here in uh, our own Congress for being soft on crime? When are we going to have hearings to do away with the ridiculous, outrageous policies of defunding the police? And do we really think that that is a good idea when it comes to uh, dealing with crime? Would anyone in their right mind think that crime would go down when we attack and defund the police, when we're soft on crime? And here we have a southern border that remains open, allowing gang members to come in. We've not had one hearing about that. We've not dealt with one thing of the, of the issue. This is like the old saying that we're going to blame the manufacturers of forks and spoons for obesity. I guess you're going to subpoena some of them as well to deal with obesity in this country. It is absolutely absurd that we're not dealing with the issues, and I want to know when are you going to apologize for the lack of leadership in this committee of dealing with the issues that this country is facing. This committee should have jurisdiction over government oversight and federal issues, not going after private citizens and private companies like we're doing here today. Uh, yes, violent crime is on the increase. That's a concern for all of us. Uh, but to go after the manufacturers of gun while at the same time remaining soft on crime, defunding the police, supporting those policies, and keeping our southern border open for all sorts of criminals is absolutely disgusting to me and un, uh, unthinkable, the height of irresponsibility and lack of accountability. My colleagues uh, seem to forget that the American people have a right to own guns. It's a constitutional right uh, to defend themselves, and yet we have a perpetual barrage of politicized buzzwords like have already been used here this morning like assault weapons and weapons of war to support arbitrary gun grabs, not from criminals, but from law-abiding American citizens. And it's, uh, it's time that we see some changes. Mr. Daniel, I'd like to go to you. Uh, there are approximately 8.5 million Americans purchased a firearm for the first time in 2020. Uh, and this is a trend that's continued to go up for the last several years. Does your company make or produce any illegal product? Mr. Daniel. We make, uh, we don't make any illegal products. We abide by all the laws. We have a very, uh, very uh, professional compliance department. We focus on always doing the right thing. We focus on, uh, we, we tell our employees every month uh, in our monthly meetings that, that we need to be 100% compliant 100% of the time. Um, and we, uh, and, and we have, uh, we have a, uh, are known to have a, a great a great system of making sure that we're uh, everything is legal. And I have been to your your company. I've toured it. It's an amazing place. Why do you believe so many Americans are uh, choosing to exercise their uh, constitutional rights for firearms uh, and purchase firearms, particularly things like the AR-15, which seems to be under attack this morning? Congressman, uh, I. Believe uh, our our data sh agrees with what you have stated that there were eight eight million plus new gun owners in uh, in 2020. That number has it has continued. Those types of numbers have continued through today, uh, equaling 
16 million plus new gun owners. Our internal data shows us, sir, that less than 20% of those new gun owners who have never owned a gun before uh, are Republicans. And that people who have, uh, who have made a decision in the past to never own a gun have changed their minds and are buying guns in unprecedented qu uh, qu quantities. Uh, and I'm sure that's primarily to defend themselves because we're soft on crime. We're not dealing with the, the real issues. Ms. Uh, Okafor, let me go to, to you here. Uh, lawful gun ownership is an integral part of a citizen's right to defend themselves. In fact, it's interesting, and uh, Chairwoman, I have two articles here, but in 1982, uh, the city of Kennesaw, Georgia, passed an ordinance requiring heads of households to maintain working firearms and ammunition. And interestingly, Kennesaw, which is a metro Atlanta city, certainly not uh, a depopulated rural area, uh, uh, they have incredibly low crime rates, particularly violent crime. In fact, between 2012 and 2020, only two uh, homicides in that city. And I have a couple of articles I'd like to submit uh, to the record, please. Without objection. Thank you. Ms. Okafor, in your opinion, is private gun ownership uh, one of, if not the most effective means of self-defense? Thank you, Congressman. Yes, absolutely. That is one of the most um, imp impactful ways of deterring any criminal from wanting to go to the places that are most vulnerable and defenseless. Like I said in my testimony, 94% of, of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. So a criminal is going to go where they can do the most amount of harm in the least amount of time. And so those places that they know that they're not going to be able to do that, um, they're going to be a deterrent. Is that answer data-based? That's absolutely data-based. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate the chairwoman's uh, uh, allowing us to go a little bit uh, over our time, but with that, I'll yield back.